What's up, welders? Welcome to another episode of Adventures in Welding. I'm Paul. Thanks for joining me. Today we are going to talk about flux cord arc welding, FCAW. If you're just getting started in welding, there's a really good chance that you might have for yourself one of the uh, cheap Chinese import flux core welding machines. And the fanboys are all going to beat you up and tell you you can't weld anything with it unless it's got the name Lincoln or Miller or Hobart on it. But I'm going to tell you that's not true by keeping track of a few simple things, making sure you do your proper, pr proper prep work. You can do a lot of welding with flux core. In fact, you'd be surprised how a lot of heavy industry uses flux core. Of course, they're going to use thicker wire, more amps for heavier materials, but you can do a lot with a simple one hung low flux core machine. So let's talk about some of the basics and then we'll do some welding. All right, before we start with any joint prep or any basic, this is the most basic thing you need to do. You need to throw away that roll of flex cord wire that came with your one hung low machine. It was manufactured in Uncle Wu's garage in, you know, somewhere in China. And while the machines may be perfectly capable, that crap wire ain't going to do you any good. This is Lincoln Inner Shield NR211. This is what you want to work with. Hobart makes some good stuff too. Just make sure you get yourself a premium brand of flux cord wire. If you try and do it with that cheap shit, you're going to be upset. You're going to think your machine's no good, you're no good, but it might just be the wire. Next, proper joint prep. We're going to do three different joints today. We're going to do some square tubing joints. And as you'll notice here, this has been cleaned to bright shiny metal as has this, and this has a slight bevel ground into it. And what that does is that just gives a little more meat for the wire to bite into. Next, we're gonna do an outside corner joint. Again, the metal has been cleaned, nice and shiny. Now we're gonna butt them up and do that. And we're gonna do a straight butt joint. Again, the metal has been cleaned and we've ground a nice bevel into it. Something for that molten puddle to get down in there and bite into it. All right, one last thing before we get started with our welding. Since we're going flux core gasless, we need to set up our machine for DCEP. That's direct current electrode positive. And on most machines, that's going to be somewhat of a uh, reverse polarity setup. So we have our positive wire coming from the MIG gun going to the negative from the machine's power output. And the negative, the work lead, going to the positive. If you set that up backwards, you're not going to be happy. All right, it's always a good idea to plan out your welds ahead of time and kind of do a dry run. So we're going to do that. But first I want to show you the end of the gun there. That wire sticking out the end is called your stick out. And what we have there is a little over a half of an inch. Which is a little too much stick out. You want to cut that so that you've got just about a quarter inch of stick out. It's really all you want. Now, I'm going to plan my weld. Since this is flux core, we're going to drag, which means we're going to start here and end here. And the way I'm going to weld this is a little motion like this, staying on the leading edge of the puddle, keeping the slag at the rear of the puddle. All right. Since this is just a small three inch weld, I'm only gonna use two tacks, one at the beginning and one at the end. Now 
Now that we're tacked in place, we're ready to begin our weld. I'm going to take and clip the ball off the end of the wire so that we got a nice smooth wire to start with. All right, we're starting our weld right at the last tack. We're forcing that in there. Now, as we drag, we're wanting to watch the puddle swell to about the size of a pea, keeping the puddle a consistent size and pulling back on the gun as we make a sweeping motion across the leading edge of the puddle, touching both edges of the joint. Three, two, one. All right, there we have our weld. We've got a nice looking little ripper pattern. We're not crowned up too high. We're not too flat. That's gonna be a very nice, strong weld. Now let's move to the outside corner joint. Alright, I've got the parts of our outside corner joint held in place with a couple of magnets and we're ready to tack it up. You'll notice there is a small gap there where we want the weld to penetrate. So let's get our tack in and get ready and weld it out. Since that's a larger piece, I put in three tacks. All right, let's get a close up and arc shot of this one. All right, here's our outside corner. We're doing a vertical down weld. And I kind of got myself out of position here, but the, the, the method of my madness is the same. You're going to start at the first tack weld, push that wire in there, sweeping side to side, staying on the leading edge of the puddle tying together both edges as you slowly move down. You're watching the puddle. You want to see the puddle swell so that it takes in both edges of the parent metal and that's when you know you're good and you can move on. Alright, here's our outside corner joint welded up nicely. You can see a little difference in the bead right there where I stopped to reposition since I was doing it one-handed. Nice joint. Alright, let's move on to the tubing joint. Alright, here's our square tubing joint. I've already got it tacked and ready to weld. We're going to have two separate types of welds here. On these flat faces, this is going to be what's called a flare bevel groove and these will be an inside corner. You'll have two of each. This is going to be our first bevel groove. This is one of the flat sides and I'm just sweeping back and forth across it as I move down the length. There's really nothing to this joint. Now I'm going to flip it over and do the other one. Same technique back and forth as we move down the joint. It's only about an inch long so it only takes a couple of seconds. Now we're into our first inside corner. You want to get in there, push it, make sure I'm pulling. See how I'm pulling along? That pushes the slag to the back of the puddle so that it doesn't get trapped in our weld. Same thing here. Start at the front and drag that back. I've got a little bit too long of a stick out there. Okay, here is our finished uh, square tubing joint. And you got to make sure you go all the way around the corners. But that's a solid joint. And that's not going anywhere. Alright guys, that's it for this episode of Adventures in Welding. Learning to love flux core. Or flux core for the ultimate beginner. Or yes, you can weld with flux core. Or 
No, you don't need a miller. Anyway, thanks for joining me and just a couple things to keep in mind. Throw away that roll of some young guy wire from Uncle Ho's garage. Get yourself a good roll of quality wire. It's going to make all the difference in the world. And if you happen to get your hands on one of the um, low-end welders from that place that's all over the place, you know, swap out your ground lead for a good ground lead. It's going to make a big difference. You can do a lot with these welders. Thanks for joining me, and I hope I see you next time.